In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you one of my favorite passing concepts from the Gun Bunch tied in in Madden 21. This concept is going to allow you to be able to be very, very effective against things like match coverage and man coverage. It's really one of the best uh, passing concepts in the entire game. So let's dive right into the video. But if you have not met me before, my name is Cody and my channel is all about helping people become a better Madden player in Madden 21. And so if you're looking to get better at this game, I want to encourage you to go ahead and click that subscribe button at the bottom right hand corner of your screen. It's completely free to subscribe and it allows you to be able to stay up to date with the latest tips and strategies that we release here on the channel every single day. Now in today's video, I'm going to be going over PA boot over and kind of a little bit of a little bit more detail than a lot of people will probably go into on this and sharing why this is such a powerful passing concept. I'm going to be giving you a setup today that is not kind of the traditional way of running this play, um, but it's really to leverage one of the, you know, again, the beauty of PA boot over is it has so many good routes. We're going to show you how to leverage one of them in particular in this video. Now, if you don't know, I actually have a full gun bunch tied in offensive guide and so so if you want to get my full gun bunch tied in offensive guide, I'm going to leave a link to that in the description. That's just 15 bucks for the whole system. If you want to get the bunch and the bunch tight end combo guide, which is from the Jets playbook, you can get that for just 20 bucks uh, down below. But anyways, we're going to be talking about P boot over today. And the first and foremost uh, thing that we want to kind of point out for those of you that don't know is if you put your tight end on a delay fade and then you double team this defensive end on the left side, whenever you roll out, if as long as you're rolling out long enough, they're just gonna, his man coverage will chase you, and as you can see, the delay fade's gonna be left wide open. That's kind of the popular way to run this. And so what it's gonna cause is it's going to cause your opponent to shift into a lot of different styles of defenses, one of which would probably be a match coverage, okay? And so what we're going to do with this is we are gonna basically create a natural flood on the right side and the left side. So what I like to do is I like to put the X receiver or the tight end on a streak. I like to put the square receiver on a curl and I like to put the R1 receiver on an in route. As you can see right here, this is a very simple little route combination, but the main route that we wanna hit is this crossing route. Ideally, this crossing route will come wide open against the match coverage, as you can see right there on the sideline. It's a very, very good read. The cool part about this specific uh, route is it really does a good job against different types of zone drops. So if they drop their purple zones or their curl flat zones at 20 to 25 yards, that little crossing route is so, it's a little bit deeper than a traditional crossing route. And you have your best route runner running that route it's going to consistently be able to have a lot of success. Now, let's say for example, maybe they audible down and maybe they try to run some man-to-man -man coverage. That's where this running back route is really, really good and that circle route is really good. But once the running back route kind of cuts underneath, it's typically going to do a very, very good job at just beating man-to-man. -man. It's also going to do a good job at kind of just creating some more spacing on the field. But as you can see right there, it just kills man-to-man, -man, gets outside, and then you can run for about 10 to 15 yards after the catch um, with this little route. So what I wanna do now is I wanna talk a little bit about zone drops and why this does such a good job specifically for when your opponent's doing zone drops. So very common zone drops to use against a, a playbook like this or a formation like this is 5, 25, 5. So they're gonna put their flats on five, their curl flats are gonna be on 25, and then their hooks are gonna be on five. So that's kind of a common uh, defensive strategy for this. And so what you're gonna kinda of see is they're gonna play really, really good underneath coverage, but they're never gonna be able to stop this crossing route. You see that these zone drops, they just, they don't get there. You see, I mean, he gets over the top, and that was actually fairly decent. Um, but the cool part about this is they actually have to be able to stop both the short flat and the high flat. So the cool part about that circle receiver route is it's not exactly like a little flat pass. What I mean by that is like a five yard flat zone is not gonna stop it. So if I shifted um, and, and played hard flats over there, right as you can see, I'm gonna put the flats down there now so they're gonna play underneath. If you watch the circle receiver, whenever he comes to the side, if you just, you can basically just, and right, th right there I didn't get the playmaker, but you can basically just playmaker him upfield against that, that five yard flat zone and it's gonna put him into a pocket that is really, really, really effective. So again, you're just gonna do, you know, kind of this combination right here, and then he's gonna motion motion out. And if I did, like I said, just just kind of get him up the sideline. I don't know why he's not playmaker. Now I might have to roll out of the pocket, which is kind of unfortunate. But typically, this this circle receiver will um, will get out there. So here I'll just kind of 
double team so I can roll out. So you're basically doing this. And for whatever reason, the playmaker, my playmaker is not working. But essentially, you playmaker him up and he would be wide open. Another thing that you could do if you wanted to is, and this is actually something that I, I do like to do occasionally, is you can just put him on a, a slant. Now, the slant zone, especially with their five yard, because they're at five yards, that slant is going to get way over the top of it. So as you can see, it's going to kind of get in this nice little window over the top that is really, really hard to defend because they just can't defend every level of the field. And that's what's really cool about this, this concept. So you can use a slant route because most of the time he's not going to get pressed. And as you can see right there, I can just kind of pass lead that up. And that corner, even though it's a safety, um, or even though it's a corner at safety, he will never, he won't react to that if they're at five yards. Now, if they were at, you know, 10 yards or something like that, then the cool part is then you would just be able to throw it underneath it. So the other thing is that this opens up that triangle receiver. As you can see, that triangle receiver just gets very deep down the field. And when you use the streak from the uh, tight end, it really does help open up that crossing route even more than it probably already is. Now on the left side of the field, if they're not playing disciplined coverage and they don't have any flat zones on that left side, I can take that running back all day long. As you can see, I can be very, very consistent with that running back route. Now let's say that they do put you know, some really underneath coverage over on that left side. They got a yellow at five and that, that. You can see here that I can basically just throw the curl route in that five yard kind of pocket. So the beauty of this play is that it really does a great job at just spacing the field at a very, very high level. Um, you can see here this slant. Whenever you, If you throw that slant against man coverage, it absolutely torches it, especially if it doesn't get pressed. And so that's just the beauty of this offense. So like I said, this is, in my opinion, one of my favorite offenses. There's so many things you can do with this offense. If you, if you have some um, creativity, it's a very simple offense, but at the same time, it's a very powerful offense. And so if you have not gotten my full bunch tight end offensive guide, I'm going to leave a link for it for you to be able to pick that up in the description and if you use that link in the description of this video you're going to be able to get that book for just 15 bucks it's literally going to walk you through how to run the bunch tight end at the highest level this is the offense that i use in all the tournaments this year and in my opinion this is one of my favorite uh, offenses that i've ever created in the game so if you have not gotten the bunch tight end offensive guide yet i want to encourage you to pick that up like i said it's just 15 bucks and i'm going to leave a link for that in the description of this video